Hey guys, welcome to Red Blood Reviews. I know we kind of teased the Hobart in the last video with the Trailblazer, so we figured one broke down machine was enough. I had to go ahead and get my broke down machine out of uh, Tim Buck 2. And uh, anyways, it's a Miller Bobcat 225. It's one of the older ones. Don't look like much. My brother thought it was a good idea to put a Polaris two-stroke oil. Well, it wasn't two-stroke oil. It was um, the crank case two-stroke oil or whatever. It only takes like a tablespoon somehow. Anyways, he put some of that in there and uh, fucked it up. I'll show you on this side. Uh, right here. This, this machine was actually running. We let, I let Derek borrow it out there right next to Paychecks. And it was running and everything, but it, every once in a while it would backfire and it wouldn't hold the load. Well, come to find out that these motors are actually pretty good on running on one cylinder and you're barely noticing it. We ended up uh, pulling a spark plug on one side, it died, plugging it back in, starting it up, pulling the other plug on it, and it didn't do absolutely anything. So I knew we had a dead cylinder. Went ahead and took the uh, head off to find out that the piston is not connected to anything. So, this motor is no bueno. No bueno for shit. So, anyways, I picked up, uh, my aunt gave me a little tiller or something. I went to the uh, lawnmower scrapyard and I bought, well, I didn't buy it. I traded straight up for a Cub Cadet lawnmower. It's actually a pretty nice one, but it looked like it had been caught on fire at one spot. Uh, it looked like the motor had been sitting a few years, but the motor's free. We just got it out here on the cardboard, just kind of spraying the greaser on it, hitting it. You can ask Derek, this thing looks pretty rough before we got a hold of it with fire washer. Yeah, it did. And, uh, it's a lot more clean now, but we, uh, we sprayed some more degreaser on it, and uh, we're going to let it sit for a minute, and then we'll, uh, we'll spray it again with the pressure washer. We covered up all the, the exhaust port and the intake with some uh, Walmart sacks, stuffed them in there. I don't know, Derek. Keep a little bit of water out. <laughs> this motor may not be. This motor may not be good. It looks like the motor caught on fire at one time. It was really nasty. It had a lot of caked on oil and stuff. It, I mean, it might have been leaking out of the head. Yeah, well, one thing we're going to have to do is probably going to have to rob the starter off of that machine and uh, put it on this one and see if this thing turns over because this thing's got a rough spot on it and I'm kind of worried about it. I thought it just being caught on fire maybe, you know, something happened to it that just caught on fire and they gave up on it. But uh, this thing... Uh, it's pretty good right there, and then it just, I mean, it it turns a little bit, but it don't turn much. So, I mean, I can... You might, it might be a little bit of rust in the cylinders. We're going to take the motor completely apart and yeah. uh, uh, look see what she looks like on the inside. Oh, look at that. You see that? Yeah, all the water coming out. Oh, yeah. Does that look rusty? Yeah, it's rusty. Yeah. Well, at least that one turns. The other one ain't turning. So, I had the hood on the lawnmower, and there was no carburetor or anything like that. I thought the hood was enough, but apparently not. There was standard water in the intake. So, there ain't nothing coming out of the other side, though. When more than turning. likely, the intake valve was open on this side. It rained in there, filled that piston up. Just good news. Besides, it may smoke a little bit when we get it running. We're going to take it all, take it down to the to the bare, bare essentials and we're going to clean it up and use the wire brush and yep. clean all the rust off of it and all that and good then, stuff. Uh, yeah, hopefully I can uh, hopefully I can do something with this right here. I think this is pretty cool. Even though the generator is going to be on this end right here. One thing cool about this engine that the other one doesn't, like Derek's Trailblazer, my welder, or even my lawnmower, they don't have this piece right here even though it, it can be bolted on. It's got this little housing right here because of the Hobart, I mean the Hobart, the Cub Cadet actually had a shaft going to feed the uh, transmission and this actually turned on to feed the belt. So pretty intricate design. I'm thinking maybe I could probably come off of here with the shaft and the pulley and make me a little Bobcat air pack. <laughs> That'd be pretty nice, one of those little cheap Harbor Freight yeah. front air pumps on it and then be good to go. Easy money right there. I guess you couldn't do it while you're welding, so you couldn't gouge, but, you know. That Bobcat, that was a small machine back in the day, but you can see this thing is six inches longer than Derek's Trailblazer. 
And it's six inches longer than that Hobart. Oh, uh, it's about eight inches longer than that Hobart. That Hobart's about th 38 inches long. This one's about 46 inches long. Yeah, it fits very, barely fits in between the wheel wells of the pickup, but a lot of excess space. Then what I'm hoping for. We're gonna have to take a lot of the parts off of this motor and put it on the other motor yeah. to make it fit in the miller and do everything that it's supposed to do in the miller. Yeah. And hopefully we can get this generator turning where we can start welding with this thing and then get this one going and get that one going. We got us two backup machines and then we can be real welders. And we can throw we really could throw them on the trailer and if we uh we don't want to use our machines that we, we use on a normal basis we can just hook up to the trailer and take these old machines out and work with them well my, my main thing is if we can just you know put our heads together and we get on a big enough job where you know it's faster and more time efficient to hire a couple of hands that can run a decent bead you know what i mean we can use both of these machines on our trailer and hell even ha we could pull this trailer with either mine or your pickup or even another trailer and hire a couple hands that can run a decent beat and all of a sudden we got four welders and we can knock out a weak job in two days and we're still getting paid the same amount of money yeah and, then, uh, and uh i don't this trailer is not what the uh welders are going on this one's a little <laughs> too small we already had a flat on the way here so yeah we had we got air back up but uh that tire is not any good anymore yeah the, the uh if we put both machines on here it's about as much as they would hold but right now this is my little this is my little round town trailer. I need to go this pick is a lawnmower trailer. Or a lawnmower. Yeah, I, I carry my lawnmower on all the time. It's going to mow my lot. Or to go mow something else. I put my lawnmower on here. It's the perfect size. You can just kind of pull it around. Like even with the welder on it, I can just pull it around. No big deal. I mean, it's an easy trailer. Once the tires are here, it rolls pretty easy. You can pretty much roll it anywhere. And like I said, it's got this where you can put a whole or a good refrigerator or something on it. You can put your lawnmower or something on it. It's a good around town. I pull it with my little Buick Enclave, and it does a damn good job pulling it. I mean, it's it's just an extra little trailer. I paid 400 bucks for it, and I'm glad I did pay 400 bucks for it because I wouldn't have the house I have today. And back there's our uh, our table. We uh, we do our small tool reviews on. Uh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do some more tool reviews here pretty soon. We uh we gotta go buy some. <laughs> We can't. Yeah. We don't get them give to us. We gotta go buy them ourselves. So. Yeah, we gotta get. I mean, we'd be more willing if some people would give it to us. I mean, I, and we would uh, give a good, honest review. Yeah. And uh, maybe some people are scared that we'll give too honest of a review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Now, but anyways, we'll, uh, we'll check back with you later. We're gonna get to work on this. And, we'll uh, we'll do uh, probably a, a couple part series on uh, uh, putting this back together. We'll yeah, do. this is gonna be a. Uh, it's definitely ain't gonna be a weekend job. This is gonna be, you know, throughout the time. This is just gonna be a uh, a red lettered rebuild right here. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> hopefully the Hobart just needs a board. We can get it going. It's called red blooded repairs. <laughs> red blooded <laughs> repair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see you on the next one.